start off with a fresh session a new session in logic pro x we're gonna find a uh, audio loop a vocal loop so that way i can show you how to apply reverb the reverb effect to the audio loop and different ways to apply the reverb effect rather it be straight on the track or rather we bust it to an auxiliary track and put the reverb on that track so let's find a vocal from the stock Apple loops. So if you want to get all of your files and you don't have them, what you want to do is you want to go to Logic Pro Sound Library and download all of the available sounds. Some of these sounds may already be there, but they just may not be downloaded and they have a little download button right next to it and you just click it and you can download the sounds. But if you do, you go into your instruments and you find vocals and then we just find a dry set of vocals that, you know, we could use for an example. Uh That sounds good enough that we could use to uh, apply some reverb effect on it. So what we want to do is just drag it straight into an empty. Once you drag the track in, you drag it to an empty space. I'm not going to drag it to the top space. That's where the microphone is at. So if I drag it to the empty space, Logic Pro will analyze this track and it will ask me, do you want to import this tempo information? And I say yes. So now it changes the tempo information of the actual track. So now we know that this track is recorded in 127 BPM. Well, 127.0001 nuts. Anyway, that's how that's recorded. So what we want to do is highlight this region. So that way we can just continuously play this loop and it doesn't play dead space. So once this track is selected, we can now select our stock reverb. So Logic has good plugins, stock plugins that you can use. You don't have to have waves or UAD or anything like that if you want you can but it ain't the joystick man there's always a player behind a joystick so using logic pro stock plugin chroma verb we're going to slap that chroma verb on there but before i play it i want to turn it off and i want you to just hear what this sound like with no effects on it oh 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 so now let's turn that chroma verb back on and what we have here is we have some parameters first here we could select presets different types of presets to give it different types of spatial effects on the vocals here also we could have also different types of spatial effects that we could select for the vocal it will change uh, this information right here we have attack size and density this is how soon or how late you want the delay to happen the size of the delay how big you want the delay to be when you're giving it the effect the density is how more or less how heavy you want the delay to be and the decay is how much delay will decay over time more or less like the sound uh, getting lower and lower over time and distance this is how far you want the delay to go over time as well and then you have dry and wet dry refers to the main signal your main vocal signal so pretty much think of this like vocals pardon me for like volume so if you want to have hundred percent dry you have hundred percent of your main signal coming into this actual plug-in and the wet knob or portion of it is how much of the reverb you want to put on top of the dry signal so here we have hundred percent dry fifty percent wet let's see what that sound like oh oh Oh, oh, oh. So it gave it a lot more depth, a lot more room. If you're really looking to get into production, mixing, mastering, and things like that, I would look into a book by David Gibson called The Art of Mixing. It's like a visual theory or presentation of how you can actually mix your music. It, it gives you like a visual rep representation of like a cube and think of a cube, a uh, spatial cube. If you have a 3D cube or even a singular cube, 1D, and you fill that cube up mentally with smoke. So that smoke will fill up the cube. Now take that smoke and then take the frequencies and replace the smoke. Like you got your highs, you got your mids and you got your lows. So now when you're mixing, you want your lows to cover the bottom of the entire cube, rather it be 1D, 2D or 3D. However you envision it, you want your bottom to cover the actual bottom of the sound frequency spectrum. Same as the mid, same as the high, but you also want them to mesh in, blend like if you was a, you know, a barber cutting a fade. So think of it like that. If 
that even makes sense. But David Gibson, the auto mixing that'll help you visualize when you're mixing because you have to use your ears in order to actually hear it. Plus, your environment will dictate how your mixing is. So you have to get used to your environment. Your ears have to be trained to your environment so that way you could actually mix. So use different, you know, references, music references when you're doing your mix in whatever environment you're in. So you can actually, you know, achieve that same type of sound or even loudness. So let's see what it sounds like when we drive up the wet on the plug in itself. Oh, 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 oh. And another little tip when you mixing and using plugins, one thing you're going to notice is if you start loading up plugins on your main track or whatever track that has whatever sound, the vocal, the kick, the snare, whatever instrument is on whatever particular track you're mixing or trying to mix, you're going to come into a problem where you may have CPU issues and whatnot. So it's a good rule of thumb to not load up your main track unless you have the computer to be able to handle all of that processing information. So you need something with a, with a strong CPU, something with good RAM, something like that so the workaround would be to send your main tracks to auxiliary tracks like bus them out to different tracks so that way you could load up the bus tracks with some effects so that way it doesn't kill the cpu so you kind of like balancing out the the power of how it you know distributes its information and how it processes the information that you want it to do so you want to give it tasks that it could actually perform rather than loading it up so that way it slows down and, and messes up your computer so room we could change that that's uh let's say like dense and see what that sound like oh, 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 oh. And you could also mix and match because sometimes when I mix, I would put stock plugins or even whatever plugins I'm using directly on the track. And then when I bust it out to another auxiliary track, I will use another reverb, you know, try to become a mad scientist. So you got to mix and match, just try different things. So there's no one way to do anything. So you put it on a track, you put it on the aux track, you put it on both tracks, you put it on one or the other. It, it really doesn't matter. All you're trying to do is achieve the sound that you're trying to achieve. So, you know, your mixing style is going to be mixing style you know what i mean that's what you're trying to figure out how you can do things so if we turn the dry all the way down let's see what that sound like oh, oh, oh. So now we could leave that up all the way up just to give that little test. Now we want to send this to another bus. And when you send it to another bus, you just click on sends bus and you should have 32 buses. So you can send it to any bus. So I select bus number one and this, remember, you got to turn the volume up. So what you're doing is sending a copy of this particular sound to another auxiliary track. So, you know, copy and paste. So what you want to do is turn that up and me rule of thumb. I just stop at 11 o'clock. There's no reason why I just stop right there. Yeah, I don't go I don't crank it all the way up to zero because then that's that's just too much. It's too much or so the signal's going to start distorting. So what I do is I just bring it to around eleven o'clock. It's usually like negative eleven decibels, something like that. I just want to give it more signal, give it more body. Think of that spatial cube. You want to fill up the spatial cube so your song sounds full and not thin. Oh, oh, oh. So how you get to your mix window, you press X and you have your aux track and always want to do maintenance. So you could put this as vocal verb. And I also have a mix template loaded up with all stock plugins. It's actually like a master template. I'm going to do a tutorial on that as well. And I'm going to leave it in, a, you know, leave it like a download link. So you could download that. It has all the delays you can use, has all the reverbs you can use. It has the EQs. It has the compression. All you would have to do is just turn things on and off. So I will go through the whole tutorial of how you use that whole entire template. So that template is something um, that will definitely help you out when it comes to mixing. I use it and it's actually loaded up with a lot of the Waves plugins. But like I said, I have a stock version. So that way, if you don't have these plugins, you'll be able to still use the template with or without the plugin. So if it's loaded up with stock plugins, you'll be able to understand the routing path and how to you know, process your, your sound. So this is what it's going to sound like if we throw another chroma verb. We're just going to throw the same reverb on top of this. And usually... Not even usually when I loaded this up on the um, on the aux track, automatically it came with no dry signal, meaning that I'm going to give it all the reverb and no dry signal because we're already sending a copy to this aux track. So essentially what this track is actually doing is just bleeding in more reverb into the mix. So when you put it on a main track, you could bleed too much reverb. But when you aux it or bust it out to a, another aux track, you could actually max it out and it doesn't sound muddy or crazy. But still play with the knobs when 
when you mix in with other instruments and other sounds so that way it can fit this is what i do after i apply reverb i usually always after put an eq just so i can shape the lows and the highs so that way it's just not think of the cube again of this spatial effect with smoke if i just throw reverb that means that i got smoke blowing everywhere more or less so i want to tape off the the lows tape off the highs so that way my reverb is sitting right centered or in the middle somewhere in the middle so that way it sounds the way it needs to sound it doesn't sound like it's it's, it's clashing with the highs it doesn't sound like it's mutting out the lows it sounds actually crisp and clear behind the vocals behind your instrument whatever track you have so here's what it sound like oh, 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 oh. And there's other reverb plugins that Logic Pro have. So what you would do is just go into your audio effects channel, go down to reverb. I have, you know, UAD plugins because I have the Apollo Twin interface that's, you know, interface my speakers, my mixer, the microphone and things like that all together. So I'm using UAD, but inside stock plugins for Logic, you have the Chroma Verb, you have the Inverb and you have the Silver Verb. Space Designer is another very good reverb machine machine that you can use on your vocals your, your instruments you can use this on anything space design is a very good reverb machine that you could actually use it has a lot of different presets in it so this would be a good one that you could use if you want to you know put some effects on your track oh, 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 oh. Because this is kind of mixed with like a delay effect as well. So it has, you know, giving you a couple different things. So this is how you would use reverb, a basic tutorial of how you would use reverb on a vocal track. And you could actually use reverb on any track. You could use it on a whole entire mix or one single mix or every mix. Bust groups of instruments to a track and use it on that mix. So be creative. Try different things out. Become an alchemist. So there's no one way to, you know, mix. There's no one way to get things right so all you have to do is learn how to train your ears within your environment and you'll be able to get better just practice 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 that's all you got to do so follow the channel i'm taurus the general peace appreciate you for watching